As for my financial disclosures, I'm a consultant for a Dutch ophthalmic instrument manufacturing company called Dork, but it probably doesn't have any relevance to today's chat. So one thing that we all know is that penetrating keratoplasty is a terrible surgery. It permanently weakens the cornea, it promotes glaucoma, it precipitates cataracts, it provides an uneven and unstable refractive surface, it presents the constant risk of allograft reaction and graft rejection, and perhaps worst of all, it promotes many unhappy patients, particularly if the surgery was elective and not urgently required. And with that in mind, it's still astonishing that PK remains the global standard of care for patients with advanced keratoconus. There are new treatment options like DALC, deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty, and new femtosecond technology for shaping the recipient and the donor tissues, but for the most part, these have merely mitigated some of those problems without actually solving any of them. Meanwhile, we have UV cross-linking and intracorneal ring segments for keratoconics, but those are exclusively available mostly in Europe, into patients with early to intermediate phase keratoconus. In other words, patients with advanced disease are ineligible for those options, and they have to receive a PK or a DALC. What has been badly needed is a new surgical treatment for patients with advanced keratoconus that is free of the complications of PK and DALC, which improves the vision of these patients and which stops the progression of their disease. And so with that in mind, we had the idea of a new kind of surgery. Now, the earliest and most specific indicator of keratoconus, arguably, is the fragmentation of Bowman's layer, which is a mechanical insult that might critically destabilize the cornea and predispose it to ongoing ectasia. So with that in mind, we had the idea of performing an isolated Bowman layer transplant into the mid-cornea of keratoconic eyes. So, to test this hypothesis, this theory, we did an isolated Bowman's layer transplant in 22 eyes of 19 patients who were contact lens intolerant, which is to say they would have otherwise received one of these bad PKs or DALC, and we followed them for about five years. When determining whether this operation was a success or not, we wanted to know, number one, did the corneas of our transplanted eyes flatten? Did they regularize, normalize, look more like a normal, unoperated cornea? Did the progression of the ectasia stop? Second, were these eyes able to rewear their contact lenses again? And third, were we really accurate in thinking that we would get rid of the complications, the impetus of the whole operation to get rid of the complications? Was that achieved? Here's how we prepared our isolated Bowman layer grafts. It's the same process in Rotterdam, the Amnitrans eye bank, and also in the Alabama eye bank, where we also prepare Bowman layer uh, transplants. So the first step is we take a corneoscleral button, we mount it in an artificial anterior chamber, we debride the epithelium using a Wexel sponge, and we inflate the stroma with air. And the purpose of that is to turn the stroma this white color to provide contrast. Next, we drip tripan blue over the surface of the cornea, and we score just inside the limbus 360 degrees around using a 30-gauge needle. And then we grab at that area with McPherson forceps and then delicately, gradually peel Bowman's layer, which is stained blue, away from the anterior underlying stroma. This is what the Bowman layer graft looks like, demarcated there by that green arrow, sitting next to a DMEC graft, which is harvested from the same eye. So that's actually another nice feature of this operation. You can prepare two corneal donor transplant tissues from the same eye. This is a transmission electron microscopy uh, slide of one of these Bowman layer grafts. So this tissue here, that's Bowman's. And this tissue here, that's the underlying stroma. Now, to get an idea of how thick this is, you can look to there, that index, which is uh, 10 microns. 10 microns is not a very familiar unit of measurement around here. So in order to help you conceptualize how thin this is, here's a scale photo of one of our residents here. So it's actually very, very small. <laughs> Uh, 
It turns out you can also prepare isolated Bowman layer graphs by hand or, 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 or by uh, use of the femtosecond laser. So if you use a Zemer Z6 femtosecond laser, which I have no financial interest in, unfortunately, uh, Jim Mabry is one of the purveyors of this laser. He owns it and takes around on trucks, and we convinced him to bring it to the Eye Foundation, and we tried making an isolated Bowman layer graft with the laser, and these were our results. So here's Bowman's there. This is the posterior stroma. You can see it's, it's, it's much thicker. Uh, I'm not sure if that's on the screen or not. Yeah, so that's five microns. It's not exactly the same scale. So this tissue is about 20 microns thick overall. So it's twice as thick as when you prepare it by hand, but it should still work. And again, here's something for comparison. So a little bit bigger, but not too much. <laughs> Everybody get good luck, right? Okay, now, the surgery. How do we actually perform the operation? Well, the first step was to create a corneoscleral tunnel using a crescent blade, then make a paracentesis and fill the anterior chamber with air. Then we used these special red, white, and blue manual dalk dissection spatulas to dissect a pocket in the midstroma of these keratoconic eyes from limbus to limbus 360 degrees around. And into the mouth of that pocket, we put a Bistec surgical glide we put the Bowman's layer graft on top, and then we slide it into the pocket and unfold it. That's what it looks like in place. This is what the eye looks like after surgery. That's a slit lamp image of the graft in profile, which is the only vantage point from which it's visible. They are demarcated by those white arrows. Now, with this in mind, what were our results? What happened when we did these Bowman layer graphs? Benchmark one, did the corneas flatten? Did they stabilize? This is a shine fluke image of a typical keratoconic cornea prior to Bowman layer transplantation. And here's after. And here's the difference. So you can see the cornea being pulled down into a more normal configuration. If you wanted to quantitate the amount of flattening, we found that on average patients experienced eight diopters of flattening, which is twice the amount that you get with intracorneal ring segments, by the way, and that 90% of our patients with progressive disease had their course arrested, which is the same success rate as UV cross-linking, by the way. And of course, none of these patients are eligible for that therapy. What about benchmark two? Could the patients, once contact lens intolerant, wear their lenses again? The answer is simply yes, all of them. 100% of patients were able to re-wear their scleral lenses. As an ancillary benefit, we found that most of these patients experienced a significant clinically, clinically meaningful improvement of their vision. Their best spectacle corrected visual acuity increased from about 2400 to something like 2125 after the surgery. What's the reason? Why did their spectacle corrected vision improve? Probably what we think is the cornea's higher order aberrations decrease, specifically their spherical aberration, because as the cornea became less bulbously irregular, less ridiculously myopic, as it flattened, that particular aberration diminished. Were there any complications? Well, yes, 10% actually. But those complications were an intraoperative perforation of decimase membrane while doing the stromal dissection, which of course would have happened anyway if they were receiving a DALC, presumably, because it's the same manipulation. And certainly a PK involves the wholesale replacement of decimase membrane. So there were no additional complications with this surgery that wouldn't have been seen with any other operation. So this 10% figure is perhaps a little bit misleading. More significantly, there were none of the really bad complications. Like, for example, there was no glaucoma because we're transplanting an acellular tissue, so there's no risk of graft rejection. So the patients don't have to use steroids. It's not an intraocular procedure, so there's no cataract, uh, cataractogenesis. There are no sutures, so there's nothing to become loose or to become infected. There's no irregular astigmatism to manage by topography. It's relatively simple, and like endothelial keratoplasty, you really can't tell just looking at the eye without a microscope that the patient has ever had surgery. So this is the left and right eye of a patient seen in the clinic in Rotterdam who had DALC in one eye and Bowman layer transplant in the other eye, 
Which eye would you prefer to have? So I think that the operation seems to be promising so far and that it appears to be safe, it appears to significantly flatten the cornea, it seems to improve patient's vision, and doesn't appear to have any extra complications. But if all I'm telling you is true, then how come there's no one else doing this? Why are we the only ones doing the surgery? Well, that question actually begs the question. It presumes that there's no one else doing the surgery. Well, that's actually not true. There are other people doing the surgery aside from those research folks in the Netherlands. Dr. Long, do you know who this is? Um, Jack Parker. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, he's a handsome man, there's no doubt. Uh, it's, this is Doogie Hauser, okay? So Doogie Hauser is not just a fictional character. Doogie, ha Doogie Hauser is a real person. Who is the real Doogie Hauser? It's this guy, Dr. Ambadi. So Dr. Ambadi is in the Guinness Book of World Records as the youngest doctor in the world. He graduated from NYU when he was 13, and then graduated from Sinai Medical School when he was 17, and then did a cornea fellowship at Duke, okay? So Dr. Ambadi is currently at the Morin Eye Center in Utah, where Dr. Fice's son is, and at the ASCRS last weekend, Dr. Ambadi presented his results from the first Bowman layer transplant in his hands. And the next person besides Dr. Ambadi do this operation is my dad. So he has operated on two patients so far, and both have gone just exactly according to these Dutch results. So an N of two is not all that impressive, but I think what's propelling this operation into new areas is the same stuff that propelled EK to take over from PK. It's that it's just not a good idea to make these massive surface incisions in the cornea and the more normal you can make the reconstruction of the eye, probably just philosophically, tele teleologically, the better. This is a picture of the first Bowman layer transplant in the United States performed at the Callahan Eye Hospital uh, on one of our patients. And um, so far we've been really happy with the results. So maybe in two years I'll be up here retracting everything, but <laughs> thank you very much for listening to me for now. <laughs>